we are venturing out to one of the most dangerous but out of earth places in Ethiopia and Africa, the Danakil Depression. Bubbling volcanoes light up the sky, sulfurous bumps of yellow twist into otherworldly shapes and mirages of camels cross lakes of salt. Lying 119 meters below sea level, the Danakil Depression is Earth's hottest and most inhospitable place. The landscape sometimes feels so unreal that it doesn't feel like Earth at all. You need to come prepared. Temperatures can rise up to 50 degrees Celsius or 122 Fahrenheit and the region is known to be lawless. So be prepared for guns, knives and aggression. So this trip isn't for the easy stomach, but if you love rare adventure, then this is made for you. So we are here waiting in the city of Samara for our um, driver, policeman, cook and guide, which you all need to take with you if you want to visit the Danakil Depression and also want to visit the active volcano and uh, to go to Dalol and uh, Samara is the starting point so we are waiting here now for our tour to start. In the past most tours started from Michele but since the Tigre war Michele has been dangerous and a big no-go for tourists. So once the crew arrived we drove from Samara to Lake Atfera and passed a couple of villages where we also made a lunch stop. Next we passed a huge salt lake at Fera and lots of inactive volcanoes on the way. The temperatures already rose dramatically to 45 degrees. So we only made a quick stop in the village of Atfera and then continued to the volcano at the Ale. Visiting Erta Ale in terms of roads has become much easier thanks to the new roads built by the Chinese. Before COVID, it mainly was off-road driving and you needed two days for the drive from Samara. The whole area is full of volcanoes and the road itself is a highlight. We are already super close to the volcano Erta Ale and you can see it behind me already the smoke. We were getting closer and closer to the volcano and the last couple of kilometers were off-road driving and we passed the old base camps where travelers used to camp. To climb the volcano you needed to hike 15 kilometers for 3 to 4 hours. Today you can take the off-road road to almost the top of Erta Ale, so the hike is only 30 minutes. The drive is mostly easy, some passages were challenging for our size but nothing is impossible for Cetros. Then we arrived at the camp just in time and hiked up after sunset. This was such an unreal experience, staying only a few meters away from an active volcano and having that experience all for ourselves. We stayed for a while, then went back to camp to have dinner and go to bed early to visit the volcano during sunrise the next day. The next morning, we hiked up again. Good morning, today we woke up very early to see the sunrise at the top of the volcano. Erta Ale lies 613 meters above sea level and is continuously erupting since 1967. This crater used to be a lava lake, but now not anymore. Nevertheless, it's not less impressive. So here we have hot air coming from the earth. The places of eruptions change every couple of months. So strictly speaking, you're not really safe where you're walking. Mm -hmm. 
After spending some time, we returned to camp, had some breakfast and then continued our journey towards the LOL. There are two roads you can take. The long one on the Tar Road is 360 km and a shorter 90 km off-road road. We decided to take one road each way to have seen it both. The landscape was mesmerizing and beautiful. So we made a lunch stop in a small town called Avalu and I don't have any footage of it because our guide told us to leave all valuables in the car, including the phones. And I'm super <laughs> grateful I did that because I was just crossing the street to the restaurant on the opposite side when a moving, like a driving tuk-tuk was passing me and a man grabbed my arm from the tuk-tuk and, and tried to snatch my key. And this was the first time I felt a little bit unsafe in this town or on the, on the whole trip. Just make me realize that it's uh, more dangerous than I thought. So I was so <laughs> grateful when I was back in the truck and we would just continue driving. This is the only snap I have minutes before the tuk-tuk came. We then continued our journey via the mountains towards the lull and came into some big rain followed by a sandstorm. The taro took us longer than expected, so unfortunately we couldn't make it to the lull for sunset. So we first checked in into the camp. So we arrived now in the lull and it's so fucking hot you don't want to go outside. And on top we are in the middle of a sandstorm, but these kids behind me they are playing soccer. After making camp, we drove to the Salt Lake. We are now here at the Salt Lake in near Dalol and it's almost 7 p.m. It's 40 degrees hot and we are 120 meters below sea level. Well, we finished our day with 45 degrees and a flat tire of the guide's car. Very good morning. Today we woke up very early at 4.30 to see the sunrise here in Dalol, but it's cloudy. Um, and our first stop here is on the Salt Lake, this huge mountain. And the mountain is completely made up from sand. That's very impressive. This day was my favorite of all because one highlight followed the next. We drove across the entire Salt Lake Asale to reach the log. This part was already a fantastic experience. The Salt Lake Asale has been mined by locals for millennia and then transported the salt on the so-called salt caravan route on a camel train of millions of camels. Unfortunately, due to several reasons, they stopped and you cannot eyewitness it anymore. So we drove across the lake and then parked the cars at the baseline. From here we walked for 30 minutes to see the area with great wads of twisted sulfur and iron oxide that paints this crazy yellow-orange landscape. But already the landscape, while walking towards it, looks so unreal. The colors are weird, the salt is orange and everywhere are strange salt, lava, silver, iron mixed shapes of rocks and who knows what. 
and oh my god, it was so so windy. We now made it to the and this place looks so out of earth. Dalol is not just one of the lowest places on earth, it's also the hottest place on earth with a year-round average temperature of 34.6 degrees. The Danakil depression is part of the Rift Valley and the Ma was formed in 1926 due to free atom magmatic activity. It occurs when emergent magma comes into contact with standing water causing it to evaporate almost instantaneously and an explosive plum of steam and rock. The highlight is a surreal multicolored fairy tale of sulfurous geysers in the center of the explosion crater. Transparent pools of steaming salt water are dotted with crystalline formations that glow in frosty green, yellow, orange, red and white tones. The product is ionized sulfur and potash deposits. We spent some time here and then headed back to the baseline. Meanwhile, temperature raised dramatically. It was unbearable hot. Next, we drove a bit further to see another highlight. And guys, can you see how unreal the colors of the Salt Lake look around here? This next stop was a surreal landscape of mud and salt mixed mountains. For me, again, looks like from another planet. After spending some time here, we headed back via the Salt Lake and made another highlight stop. This was when I realized that the salt crust wasn't that big and we were rolling over the lake with our 20 tons. We returned to the village for a quick lunch before heading back to Lake Afar. This time we were taking the short 90 km off-road track, which takes us through lava fields and the contrast of the black lava and the green fields was super beautiful, but super bumpy and I was super tired. In Lake Afera, we slept at a local hotel and were hit by an enormous sandstone while having injera and shiro for dinner. Most of the local guests are sleeping outside and I was so glad that we have our bed inside the truck during this sandstorm. Good morning guys, we woke up early again to see here the Afara Sea. It's a big salt lake where you can swim and there is also lots of hot springs in the area. After visiting the lake, we returned to Samara and went first to the car wash to get rid of all the salt from our truck. Now we continue our journey to Lalibela. I hope you guys liked this video about the Danakil depression and will continue to follow our adventures.